All right. Well, happy Tuesday to all of my webinar friends out there. This is Eric Eisen from SoCast. I head up the sales and marketing team here at SoCast and uh, really appreciative to all of those who, who could attend. Uh, this seemed to be a topic that resonated really well. We have a, a great amount of uh, attendees today and uh, we're, we're really thrilled about that. Um, of course, uh, we welcome you um, to email us after this and I'll share my email at the end to, to get this presentation. Uh, you are all welcome to it. Uh, we are also have um, one of my colleagues, Alun Sibilia, managing the live chat room. So if you do have any questions throughout the presentation, you are welcome to use on, I believe on the sidebar, there is a chat and questions option for you all to uh, use. Uh, certainly, if we have the answer, Elon will do his best to answer them in real time. But in the event that uh, we don't have the answer or uh, we have too many questions, uh, be patient with us. We'll make sure we get back to following up uh, the webinar as well. There will also be a recording of the webinar, uh, which we will send out to all of you uh, in the next few days once we get into the edit room and give you a nice cut version of that. But uh, bear with us and we'll get that out to you as soon as possible. Again, today is a very free webinar we're happy to put out, and we want to help uh, all of our radio broadcast friends attending today um, and explain to them some ideas, share some ideas, how you can turn digital into dollars. And we're going to focus on five uh, ideas, specific ideas that you can take back to your radio station to go out and sell to your ad partners and um, sponsors uh, ASAP. So let's get on with it, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, addressing all your questions. As soon as, let's see here, there we go. Um, one thing we did also want to mention is please, uh, I'll be checking uh, our Twitter after, so please feel free to share your thoughts on Twitter. Uh, you can also, uh, there is our handle at SoCastSRM, and you can also hashtag digital dollars just uh, for some fun. So uh, first, a word from your sponsor here. Uh, before we get into it, uh, we would be remiss if we didn't tell you a little bit about who SoCast is. Uh, SoCast has the mission to work with broadcasters, and we only work with radio broadcasters to help make digital growth easy. And when we speak of growth, we're really speaking uh, of two areas that we would like to help broadcasters grow in. The first is connecting and growing your audience through digital. Uh, and I'll explain how we help you do that momentarily. And the second area of growth we really want to help you focus on is we want you to be able to uh, make sure that digital is no longer looked at as a cost center, but more of a revenue center. And we want to help you grow digital um, revenue, which is obviously the focus of our topic today. So SoCast really focuses on being an industry leader and really what we have is an integrated content management system and advertising platform for broadcasters. Uh, when we speak of content management, our platform enables you to get your off-air online content out through all of the different channels you should be in today. Um, and at the same time, it has one dashboard that you can manage all of this through and uh, it also has an ad platform, so you can go out and sell all of your digital ad, uh, display advertising, as well as now we have a platform that will help you extend uh, onto other websites, uh, such as with, with geofencing and targeted display light campaigns as well. So we sort of see this as being having that integrated dashboard as being our secret sauce. Um, looking at our value propositions, um, we really focus on, you know, three things. The first is on the far left, the pinwheel is getting you radio everywhere and helping you reach your audience in all of the digital channels you should be in. So websites help manage your apps. We have a built-in social relationship management tool to make sure that you can interact with your audience rather than having to go natively into all of your digital, um, your digital uh you know, profiles on, on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, et cetera. We now offer uh, skills for Alexa for our voice, uh, and we can certainly help you with any streaming um, issue, streaming uh, supplies you need as well. 
moving into the middle there, uh, what we really do is make it easy to interact with your audience. We make it, our platform makes it very easy for your content publishers, whether it's a DJ, a promotions manager, et cetera, to create, publish, syndicate, and promote that content to help grow your audience so you can grow your impressions and ultimately lead to the third value proposition, which is grow new digital revenue and monetize your audience. So we have, as, have, as I mentioned, a variety of ad tech, uh, such as programmatic uh, tools, as well as you know, some of the more traditional display inventory units through our digital uh, properties as well. So why are we here? You know, let's talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, everything we've read and heard and all of us have come across is that traditional ad revenue is flat or even worse is in decline. But where advertisers locally or larger ones are spending money is in digital. Uh, we do expect that uh, you know, digital advertising for, lo for, for local spends is going to grow anywhere between 7.5% all the way up to, if you read, read some of the extremes, you know, in 2019, 2020, up to 35%. Regardless of what you believe and where this is, it is unquestionable that digital ad revenue and spends are increasing over time and have been for some time. And the other amazing point is that local advertisers are looking to buy digital. So advertisers are no, re no longer really looking at two different silos, looking at your traditional spot revenue and your digital as being you know, separate silos. Now they're starting to understand that there's benefit to them in pairing them together. Uh, in fact, about three quarters of advertisers in 2017 paired their buys of traditional media and digital together uh, versus 22%, only about a quarter who really bought traditionally. So it is in best interest of all of our radio broadcast partners and potential broadcast partners to really start thinking about how they can pair digital together with their traditional spot offerings. And that is where SoCast really believes that all of the digital revenue growth will come from. I think that this slide sums it up very eloquently uh, and makes it simple. Your traditional radio plus digital is really where your revenue growth is going to come from. It's truly multi-platform and integrated campaigns that are going to drive new revenue growth for radio broadcasters. And today, I'm going to share some ideas and integrated campaigns that you can take back to your teams and start selling immediately. Um, I've really tried to keep them simple, uh, out of the box like campaigns. Some of these you may have seen before, uh, and we, I wanted to share a little bit about how each one is done at a high level, how it's executed, and give you how some of our partners have generated revenue and what sort of revenue they've generated using these campaigns. So the first one I want to focus on is a makeover. And the makeovers can take a variety of different approaches. Um, you can really do home makeovers, backyard contests. You can do weight loss programs. But I'm focusing today just on home makeovers and backyard makeover contests. So, you know, there are a variety of different assets that you can produce to put on your web, your mobile app. Uh, of course, you want to be able to share these out into social as well to generate uh, results. These are great for both um, local, small market, large market. Uh, the, 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 ad, the partner who, um, who shared this with us and who was open to sharing this with us at the radio show um, is a larger market based out of Nashville. Uh, and the other great thing about these type campaigns is it creates a lot of digital content for you to put on your websites and for people to engage with. And it's generally always being refreshed as campaign, uh, as contest entries come in. So the main goal of the campaign is to have somebody send you their ugly backyard photos um, or, you know, parts of their home that they are maybe embarrassed about or, or don't look so good uh, to generate a bunch of sponsorship and people who will provide prizes to overhaul these backyards uh, in this situation. And then it gives you some post-campaign content to push out through, um, you know, for, to, to show the befores and afters. There's also great creative ways that you can get some of your offer, your 
um, sponsors, the ability to come on air or to do sort of native advertising or blogs on the topic of upgrading your backyards or simple DIY projects. So these are all great ways to get both your audience and your sponsors to create content for you while creating a lot of awareness for these and doing a lot of giveaways um, as well. So, you know, with the home and home makeover and backyard contest, there's a variety of ideal campaign and ad partners that you can look for. You can approach home and garden centers, of course, hardware stores and furniture stores, spas um, to get out of the house after you've had a backbreaking day of DIY activity, uh, family leisure, and of course, landscapers apply very, very well. Of course, the list is not limited to these, but these are sort of the low hanging fruit. Um, now, what do you get out of this type of campaign? Well, I can tell you specifically that our partner, uh, what they got were one of the benefits of doing digital is the ability, once you have your audience or your contest entries enter the contest, they can also opt in for communications from specific sponsors. Um, so in our case, you can see that these are people that were willing to share with a respective sponsor uh, the ability for that sponsor to follow up after the contest or during the contest for communications and special offers. And these are, this is lead generation effectively for those advertisers. And you can see based on, you know, what each group got, just that, you know, a landscaper would be very thrilled with, you know, a hundred opt-ins of people who that they can reach out to for, you know, prospective customers and, and future business. Overall, uh, for our, more importantly for you, the broadcaster, how did our partner do? Well, they generated significant revenue. Uh, they had um, the home makeover contest generated over $10,000 uh, plus $5,000 in prizes to generate interest. And the backyard uh, did very similar with $12,500 in uh, revenue as well as $4,000 in prizes. This can all be attributed to digital. There was no traditional spot buys included in this. This was all digital. Uh, I'd like to mention there were on-air mentions to support uh, having people register uh, to win, but again, there was, there was no spots included. The integrated campaign number two idea comes from the same market out of Nashville, and uh, it shows the simplicity and benefit of hashtag contests. So hashtag contests are a great way uh, to generate interest, of course, get high levels of social engagement. Uh, the contest that I'm going to be showing you today is Fear the Beard. What is Fear the Beard? Well, Nashville has become a hockey city, uh, very much like our hometown of Toronto, although not quite as strong fans, but close second. Uh, and of course, during hockey, for those that don't know, um, hockey players will often not shave during the playoffs uh, series. Uh, and will grow out their beards. And this has become a very you know, common practice and tradition amongst uh, hockey players. So they partnered with, uh, the radio station partnered with the sponsor for the local Nashville Predators, and that sponsor was Mountain Dew. And they were able to send out a lot of hashtags with Fear the Beard. And what they did was they had people, they went around town uh, to local events um, and did Mountain Dew tastings. They actually generated a whole street team for Mountain Dew to go out these tastings at different gas stations and retail stores. Uh, and they had people take pictures with a cardboard cutout if they were follically challenged uh, with the Mountain Dew Fear the Beard uh, and post on their website, post to social. They use their websites uh, to promote the locations of where they would be for the next tasting throughout. Uh, they used their feature rotators and sliders on their homepage, as well as had a dedicated page um, to in their navigation to the photo galleries and things like that. And of course, there's a wide variety of selfies that were sent in to social media uh, and, um, you know, just different social media uh, activity that happened. Um, and the results were extraordinary. You can see everybody was involved uh, in the Fear the Beard campaign. Um, so the Fear the Beard. Uh, you know, it generated a lot of website presence, a lot of social media presence, uh, a lot of on-site appearances. So there was a whole uh, multi-channel campaign organized around this, uh, all around the city, and it generated a ton of interest with great giveaways, lots of swag, station swag, Mountain Dew swag, uh, I believe some concert tickets. There was no radio inventory for the client other than online where they would be 
uh, and, and with the street team, but the street team generated a lot of awareness for both the radio station and the main sponsor, Mountain Dew. The other hack campaign they did was the Rock the Gold hashtag contest, which was similar, and people obviously dressed in the Nashville Predators colors and shared selfies of themselves all around, um, you know, with all of their Nashville Predator uh, gear on, uh, and the opportunity was a chance to win tickets. Uh, to the game, you could win playoff tickets, and people were, you know, sharing why they should win playoff tickets and what loyal fans they were, and it generated a tremendous amount of social media activity uh, for the radio station, um, and people were thrilled to win tickets, which were extremely hard to come by. Uh, Rock the Gold, uh, in the round one, they did a different type of contest each round, so they had self social promotion with selfies. In the first week, they had 930 entries. Uh, and they gave away a, a set of tickets. Round two, submit a photo and listen for your name uh, and then call in um, to win those tickets. So that was a, a listening a listening drive, uh, sort of an appointment listening type campaign. And in round three and four, they did all client location based with RTW stands for register to win where people were submitting ballots uh, and they were able to collect a wide variety of information around the city for for um, and all sorts of audience data. The results were incredible. Uh, listenership increased 25% from April to May. Uh, Facebook in, uh, engagement increased dramatically. You can see that sort of as the, the season, the tail end of the season, they were doing about you know just under 400,000 um, you know 400,000 impressions through Facebook, and it, it grew to you know one and a half million in May and. Um, at the beginning of June, just under a million, so a huge jump there. Twitter impressions also increased significantly during this campaign. Uh, unique web visitors increased, a hundred, doubled during that time period, and the streaming obviously uh, increased significantly. Of course, a lot of this can be attributed to the fact that there was excitement around the team. Um, I have to be honest about that, but nevertheless, the campaign generated a lot of awareness for the radio station. The revenue generated for this campaign, again, all 100% digital, was $24,000. So uh, also great revenue for that. The idea uh, that I have for number three is called the Golden Ticket Giveaway. Um, this was for a smaller market uh, and a local pizza uh, restaurant in town that really was looking to get more people to their restaurant um, and create far more community engagement using digital uh, and leveraging the radio station and leveraging on-air mentions. And of course, again, it was a multi, uh, it was a multi-platform uh, contest that peep to engage with their audience. Uh, and it really got a lot of generated a lot of web traffic to both and a lot of and a lot of foot traffic to the restaurant. Uh, the solution was to create an online show me the ticket campaign that uses that used on air and social media to direct uh, listeners to the website to find this golden ticket. And then listeners could then find the golden ticket on the website, take it into the radio station and, or take it into the restaurant to redeem it for a prop to redeem it for a free appetizer. Now, it was a four month campaign that ran from April through July. Uh, the pizza restaurant gave away free appetizers who brought in that golden ticket. And at that time, people registered to win through ballot if they showed this golden ticket to win a trip uh, during the last week of the promotion as sort of the grand prize and tie it all in. People, uh, again, how it worked was they, would, they didn't have to print off the ticket. Because everybody has a mobile phone, they could find, go to the mobile website, find that ticket, and actually just show it to the, um, to the waiter, waiter or waitress. At the time, they were presented with a free appetizer. Everyone loves cheese sticks. And then they were also given that register to win card to complete and drop in uh, the box to win that vacation. And uh, one winner was chosen at the end of the promotion for a trip to Myrtle Beach, as I mentioned. Uh, the results, they had over 1,100 plus contest entries. They had significant, the radio station had significant growth in their mobile web traffic. It increased over 115%. Uh, it made them people aware that the website was mobile responsive as well. And website traffic increased uh, significantly as well. Uh, being in a smaller market and for a smaller advertiser, it generated over $500 per month for just the digital element of that campaign. Uh, and that um, was, again, all exclusively digital. 
an integra- another integrated campaign idea. This is a little bit different, and this is one that I actually really, really love. I think this is a phenomenal idea and a great way to use digital to increase um, your, your brands uh, and really target one specific demographic of your audience that you know you have a very strong, that has a very strong following. Um, and the idea is, is to create satellite brands um, and satellite digital properties for your radio stations. The idea I wanted to share with you is one of our partners, uh, re, you know, always knew, but you know, just through data and, and, and a good understanding of who their audience was, realized it was obviously heavily female skewed um, and predominantly uh, younger uh, females, um, you know, generally, you know, in you know, some t- somewhere between the 25 and 45 range. And this was a huge, this was a huge volume of their, of their audience. So what they did was they created a website specifically for that, tar- for that demographic of listeners. And they called it All Mom Does. And it, it gave them the ability to serve unique and a local and original content generated by audience members and some local sort of maven moms in the area uh, that they could promote um, and do blogging on this website and share their thoughts um, as well as it gave a lot of opportunities to create a lot of radio content um, and some blogs and content for the radio website. So there was a, a natural inherent synergy between the All Mom Does website and the, you know, the mothership site, uh, so to speak. It effectively doubled the sponsorship endorsement and advertising inventory for the radio station because they could upsell a lot of inventory on uh, this website as well as some of the display inventory on their on their uh, on their mothership site, if you will. Um, and it obviously gave them access through social media to a very captive audience of and specific demographic uh, a specific demographic. So one of the amazing things that they did was they had a lot of these bloggers be able to uh, generate some unique content for some of the clients. And they were able to get testimonial blogs and have, you know, mothers write about their experience. Uh, You can see in some of the examples, for example, that one of the mothers wrote about, um, you know, her experience with a, she was compensated by a weight loss uh, for life clinic, but she was able to write Uh, candidly about this and it became you know an ongoing thing and this became an ongoing blog for that and it was a you know very uh you know a very impactful testimonial from someone who had had used it um so it gives you amazing native advertising and testimonial opportunities and a ton of cross-platform opportunities for your ad partners across a variety of different advertising mediums Again, you know, it, this isn't one to many. This is very highly targeted to a specific audience. Um, and, you know, the average blog had one to 200 reads for each sales blog. But that is a very targeted uh, impact, especially if you're going to get, uh, you know, for, for those advertisers. Um, and, of course, they teased on social media and have a monthly newsletter to accompany uh, the website um, that, you know, that the All Mom Does website offers as well. And there is advertising units within the monthly blog newsletter as well. I don't have any uh, results in terms of how much money this generated, but I know it's been a very successful uh, opportunity for them. Another one of our clients in Western Canada actually has a full secondary site for their community cruiser uh, called the Fun Chaser. And that is just another idea that you can use to build a satellite brand on top of what the radio station offers. The last idea we want to share with you today is uh, the digital sweepstakes. Um, an exa- a specific example we'll be highlighting today is Deck Out Dad. Uh, the idea was to give listeners the opportunity to register their dads for a great Father's Day prize pack. Um, you know, this is something that you can apply in, in a variety of different areas uh, to Mother's Day, to, you know, for, you know, all sorts of things of that nature. Um, and, you know, the benefit is, is that sweepstakes traditionally drive a lot of entries and leads, which is amazing. So the way they did it um, is they made the the registration process 100% digital. And one of the great things about digital is that you actually aggregate uh, automatically a ton of data. And that was really one of the focuses 
of, on your listeners. That was actually one of the focuses of this campaign. Um, there was very short on-air promos to explain how to register to win um, this prize pack. Uh, and everything was sort of done on demand. So the listeners had to, uh, at, were actually activated uh, to go through SMS text messaging, which this radio station uses very actively to interact with their audience. And that is how entries were taken in and the audience participated. And then it generated a lot of post-promotion foot traffic because when you entered, you automatically got a special offer to the to the to the sponsors um, store. So it sort of looked like this. You would have to uh, text in the word dad through uh, to the station hot to the station SMS line um, and immediately a triggered response saying please, please click the link to access the, the online form. Now the online form um, they they do use the SOCAS contesting engine. You are able to ask specific questions at the point of entry. You can ask as many or as few questions as you like. You could just go simple and ask a question, give me your name and your email address. But if you take it one step farther and you want to aggregate some meaningful data, you can ask questions about how often does your dad mow the lawn and you know does he need a new lawnmower or is his lawnmower more than one year old, five year old, 10 years old, et cetera you can then have that information. And going back to idea one, the most important question you can ask for the ad, for the adver your advertising partner is whether the entrant would like to opt in for communications from the, the ad partner and sponsor. And that way you can share this information with your, with your ad partner so that they can go out and actually have a lead list to follow up on. Um, once the ad, what, sorry, once the entrant filled out the entry form, they then received um, digitally a $10 off coupon or a special offer. So what do you get out of this? Well, the first thing is, is you get an amazing amount of data on your listeners and audience for both you and your advertiser. Uh, and this is, you know, a very unique thing, as I mentioned, to digital and one of the great benefits of doing a digital sweepstakes contest. The results for the client, um, the client saw an eight times the spend on the, uh, as an ROI, which they were thrilled with. Um, they obviously had a great thing to say. They actually attributed 16 lawnmower sales um, from this campaign alone. So that's where it came from. Uh, the radio station database growth was amazing um, and consistent over two years. Uh, and again, there are direct leads for the client um, that the client was thrilled to get that they could send out uh, emails to for special offers and promotions. Um, there's obviously efficiency and eco benefits with no paper entries. And I know that the station that ran this campaign was thrilled uh, that that was one of the sort of side benefits of this. They didn't have to deal with looking through a bunch of paper entries to enter them into their database. Everything was done automatically using their content management system. Revenue generated, it generated over $1,000 a week in non-traditional revenue, meaning there were no spots for this. That is all 100% attributable to digital. So those are our five ideas. Uh, I hope that there's a nugget or two in there for each of you to go back and utilize within uh, your radio stations. That and, and we would obviously love any success stories that may come out of it or any uh, ideas you may have um, I think it's important that radio starts to, you know, share ideas so they can continue to grow in what is an age of disruption. Uh, to wrap it up for us, um, you know, things to consider, use your tools, make sure that you have a content management system, a contesting tool, all of the digital infrastructure you need to execute digital campaigns that will help add value to your, to your radio partner. Um, much like uh, the, uh, you know, fear the beard, and um, you know the other hashtag contest. It's very important to capitalize on local events, local um, you know seasonal events within your communities, and make sure you're hyper focused local. We all know that that is one of radio's great strengths and value propositions in itself. Making sure that you capitalize on your locality and contextual uh, placement. Keep things simple. All of these campaigns were designed to be simple. Selfies, registers to wins ticket giveaways all seem to generate just like they have traditionally for radio. None of these 
thing that, you know, a selfie is just like somebody calling in and hearing their voice on the air. That is effectively what it is today. People sending in a selfie and seeing themselves on your website is very much the same thing, except instead of just being able to answer the phone to one or two people, you can place thousands, hundreds of, or thousands of faces over time on your website or mobile app uh, in the form of a selfie. Uh, registers to win continue to be a very effective uh, means, sweepstakes. Nothing has really changed. It's just medium and utilizing digital to make it a far more efficient and effective way to do things. And of course, ticket giveaways. Uh, always try uh, to generate repeatable concepts and campaigns so you can do them year after year and seasonally. Uh, make sure you're doing campaigns that fit your target customer. Uh, Mountain Dew, again, is a great example, having a street team, getting taste tests, uh, generating activation, that very, was very critical to them. Uh, make sure your campaigns also sort of suit their needs. Same with the golden ticket. You know, it drew, its goal was to drive a lot of foot traffic, and that campaign really uh, appealed to that target customer, uh, in this case, a specific restaurant. And you want to make sure you're able to bring new value to your advertisers. Again, that uh, having those digital opt-ins are essential. Uh, that is something, and all of that data is something that is unique, that, you know, that attribution is 100% trackable and measurable, and you can share that with your, with your ad partners. Um, and make it easy for your sales team to present. So with that said, uh, I've taken the liberty to sort of give you an idea of the starting point for a sample media kit. Um, we are uh, happy to work with any of our partners and any prospective partners on ideas on how to present your media kit uh, if you have one. But really, you know, this is sort of the introduction and making sure, again, this is purely sample uh, for you, but you want to be able to display why the benefit on the bottom, for example, of why it is worth advertising with you with some of your traffic for web, for mobile, some critical uh, data that you have that may resonate with your advertising partners as to what the benefit is and what sort of impressions and who your target audience is. Uh, the second thing is making sure you have, you know, four to six different value points that you can offer them uniquely through digital, um, such as online display advertising, whether you're doing videos um, for them and going out and doing those business directories. And then, of course, contest sponsorships are sort of some table stakes that you can hang your hat on, but make sure you outline it in a very quick, uh, very clear and concise manner uh, along the lines of this. Of course, you wanna have pricing uh, for all of your sample display inventory. Uh, one note here is we don't necessarily recommend pricing everything on a CPM level. You can certainly, uh, will have, I believe, a lot more success explaining it with your sales team and your advertisers by selling based upon a timeshare basis, meaning you can have the leaderboard ad on our website for one month for X dollars. Um, if you are a larger market or a, or a website that has a ton of web traffic, uh, certainly CPM is uh, an interesting way to go, but that would really depend on your web traffic again. SoCast can consult uh, in detail on that but at least the concept of making sure you're outlining all of your digital display inventory in a simple, concise way with pricing is very important to include in your media kit. One other nugget in here, and maybe a little Easter egg that we wanted to share with you is, you know, maybe is sharing a, a couple of specific campaigns um, and highlighting them visually with some, you know, uh, simple text. Um, one of the things that we didn't talk about as ideas is doing more programmatic uh, ad extension-like campaigns. This is a big opportunity in this day and age, and this is not attributable to the owned and operated inventory you have with your websites and mobile apps, which we we shared five examples of. This is actually getting your advertisers' advertisements out beyond your website and onto other websites that their target audience may be visiting. In this case, we're demonstrating a geofencing campaign where if you walk within a certain radius of Walt Disney World you and you searched your cell phone, for example, you would see an ad for you know a four-day pass for Disney World, um, those type of things. So you could have that advertisement geofenced to that specific geographic region. You can then retarget those customers once they leave that geofence uh, afterwards, so you can then fo have follow-up ads. 
but this is also a great um, sort of nugget of digital advertising that is, you know, obviously becoming more and more common and advertisers are looking for these creative programmatic uh, campaigns. Regardless within your media kit, whether you're using one of the five ideas I've shared today or something more advanced like a programmatic campaign, um, you should have maybe one or two specific tentpole like campaigns that you really hang your hat on included in your in your media kit, including what the campaign details, goals, and prospect and, and potential uh, results, such as the key performance indicators, uh, would be. So uh, that is probably, you know, uh, we 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 suggest that your your media kit is short, somewhere between, you know, you know, six and eight pages, depending on how much content you have. Uh, and again, SoCAS can consult with you on a meaningful level to help you develop that media kit. Last but not least, uh, for all of those who are still with us, uh, we are very thrilled to offer you a special webinar attendee um, special offer. We want to offer all of our attendees a free mobile app for six months with the purchase of every SoCast web license. So as I mentioned, SoCast offers our content management system for web, for mobile apps. Uh, we would love to, um, you know, for people to explore our platform and are happy to do a product demonstration anytime. And uh, with that being said, if you do go ahead with one of our uh, web content management system licenses, uh, for you, you will receive a mobile app for uh, six months complimentary with that web license as well. Uh, and we can share more details. Uh, contact us if you wish. Uh, you can always reach out to us at SoCastDigital.com. Uh, you can reach out to me personally to either share your thoughts on this webinar, to ask for more information on SoCast, just to tell, you know, to talk a little bit, we'd love to do that at eric at socastdigital.com. You can also book a demo with SoCast at the website or with myself. And we also do have a couple, if you do email us, we have a great digital checklist and content cheat sheet that we'd be happy to share with you uh, in a PDF format that you can put above your desks or hand out to all of your staff and employees at your stations that are great guides to, you know, on what, what to produce and what to think about when they're thinking about digital. Uh, we find them to be very valuable tools and uh, hope you'll take advantage of that. Uh, with that being said, again, my name is Eric Eisen. I am, hope you all really got some really good value out of it. Stay tuned for more of our SoCast webinars in the future, and uh, we'll look for, forward to hearing from you all. Hope you all enjoyed. Thanks again.